This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Y'all, y'all, y- this just is stop. a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Look, we're already laughing. This That's is a good start. Great way to start the show. Organic start. laugh on that one. That, that was, was an organic yes. laugh. Yes, well, it was. We can't beat that, so let's jump right in. Don Lemon <laughs> is back on CNN, and that's not what we were laughing at. <laughs> on this morning, for the first time since his controversial comments he made last week, when he said 51-year-old Nikki Haley was not in her prime. He returned to air today after two days off, but it didn't mention anything about it at all. But he did tweet out another apology, saying, I'm sorry, I've heard you. I'm I'm learning from you and I'm committed to doing better. Don Don has apparently agreed to undergo training, but TMZ reports that he's on thin ice saying one more screw up and he's out and not everyone's happy he's back. Here's what Megyn Kelly said about it. Because we have seen person after person get fired because they caused offense, mere offense, when it comes to race, when it comes to sexual orientation, when it comes to gender identity. Do women's offense Does women's offense matter? Does it matter? Because this guy managed to piss off half the country. I'm not sure if you're allowed to agree with Megyn Kelly, but (laughs) I agree with Megyn Kelly. Is sexism different than racism or homophobia or the the other isms? I'm not sure I'm allowed to agree with Jeff, and I'm about to. (laughs) You double down. (laughs) You double down. down. I think Megyn Kelly's absolutely right. I think there's been strong, organized movements for Black Lives Matter, for people of color, for gay marriages that we've seen in the Supreme Court literally change legislation. And I think sexism is sometimes the other one, the one left behind, the ageist one, if you will, the Monday of the marginalized groups, if you will. So I think she has absolutely every right to say that. And I think if I'm Nikki Haley, I am running with this as my campaign. I am killing it. Does she have a slogan that refers to this? She said, if you think I'm past my prime, hold my beer, which is I'm from Midwest. I can drink a beer with the guys. The girls want to be my friend. Great response. She's going to run with this to the White House. What was Joe Biden's um, that? No more malarkey. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Hold my beer is way better. I I never told you guys this my daughter when uh, he had a bus that said no malarkey tour it was and my bad. daughter oh, it was asked bad. me and she said what does the m word mean because she thought it was a bad word oh. that's how old school it was she's like what does that word mean i was like that word mean that, that word was... means you still <laughs> i'll leave it at that yeah. we'll leave it's it there old school yes. what do you think Way about uh don, first of all i don't think don lemon should be fired me not right? i think this is a learning experience as in the past people were fired i think they needed a learning experience as well i agree we've, i feel like we've come to that place where do you where do you stand yeah it's jeff it's the place that we've all been and which is a place of rationality i don't think don lemon should be fired i think don lemon even if he was fired you know would be the worst thing if this happened to me i would think about it for the rest of my life and i would kick myself it wouldn't be what, what people wrote about it i would be so ashamed that i said it mm. Uh, Don Lemon has been publicly taken to task for this. We are having discussions on it on television, and I feel like that's what people don't realize. We did it because we're talking about this. People used to make comments like that to uh, to people that work for them, to to employees for years. Blatantly. 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 They would make jokes about it on television, and you were applauded for it. We've interviewed people on here that said that their male co-host didn't speak to them for, you know, uh, years. for years on hit shows. That was just par for the course back then. Now, when somebody that, that's up uh, in higher ranks says something silly, we go after them and we make sure that they know that that's not okay. And that's how we know that this is a win. You're right. You're yeah. right. All right, let's move on. Will Smith. Speaking of topics, mm. attempted to poke fun at himself and the infamous Oscar slap in a recent TikTok video. Have a look. Did you know that you can pick any object, look at it, and ask it what it thinks of you? So, for example, you can pick up a pen and ask it how it sees you or what it thinks of you, and you will get an answer in your mind from your intuition. You can ask your car what it thinks of you. You can even ask money what it thinks of you. That was a weird transition. We should have put that a little bit before. So most people in the comment section applauded Will for the video. One person even called it genius and well played. I didn't see the video on purpose because I was like, why is he commenting? Agreed. Genius. You think? I think so. He didn't talk. He took that video to address the situation. Kind of poking fun at himself, which we always say, that's the way out. I liked it, and I didn't 
five seconds ago. Interesting. Yeah. Al, what do you think? Mm. I'm thinking. Me too. You know, because I'm processing what I would, I can't control what Will Smith does. I do wonder, I felt like the fact that he went to an Oscar party after that went down really did not sit with me well. And I, I'm going back and forth, and I have since the day of that happened. Do you not address it and move on? Do you try and address it and say Chris doesn't want to talk to me, which he is in, in well within his rights to not talk to Will about this? Or do you poke fun at it as, in a, as a comic? That's the three ways that we attack things. So I, in my head, I don't know. I didn't love it, I, but I didn't hate it. I, I, just, I just don't know if I... I, I really think that he un he understands the gravity of what he did. I think that's fair to say. I think Absolutely. that's fair. And I also think Jeff's response to it sort of changed my mind a right. little. At first, I was like, oh my God, like, why are you even doing this? No one's calling for you to call out the first year of the Oscars. We know what you did. We're all thinking of it. There'll be jokes from Kimmel about it. We get it. If for you to come up in the conversation again is unnecessary. But then I heard Jeff's take. And you're right, he didn't have to speak on it. He did address that, it, I bet the Oscar thought a lot about him. Right. And in five 30 second you know, TikTok video, there was a lot of context there. Right. Again, I think he needs to just sit down for a little bit. But, in my uh, but mind. You we know he has. It's been a year. Yeah, and it, Oscars are coming around the corner. So it's been a year, but we always talk about controversy and contradiction on this show, and you got to put your cards on the table. Yeah. If you're in therapy, you got to tell the yeah. therapist the deepest, darkest thing to move past yeah, it, right? I, hear I think that. Will is putting it on the table without saying any words. Yeah. I thought it was very clever the way he handled that without saying any words. Listen, I know I did something wrong. It's up to interpretation yeah. now what the Oscar it thinks of me. It is a good move on that. I don't know. I kind of liked it, even though I didn't mm. like what he did, and I didn't like the standing ovation, and I didn't like all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah, I kind of agree. You kind of changed my mind, which is making me feel weird and sudden. Yeah, but wow. there also wasn't a complete falling on the sword. There's red table yes. talks, which yes. just could have yeah. been hashed out, and it wasn't. There's a lot of things that we still don't know, and I think until then, I'm still going to give him the face. Yeah, I'm not dying on this hill, but yeah, I, I just pointed yeah. out. I'm just on the hill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now I'm sledding back down. I'm I'm running, you're lying on the hill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So check this out. Dick Van Dyke uh, Dick Van Dyke says his much younger wife is the secret for staying fit at 97 years old. Dick married makeup artist Arlene Silver, who is 51, back in 2012. He says he credits his longevity to good genes and having a beautiful young wife. That is half his age to take care of him. Dick said they stay fit by dancing and singing together. He doesn't mention anything else. <laughs> Dick recently stunned judges on The Masked Singer when he was unmasked at the show. Yeah. I'm Talk about sexist. What do you mean? Well, it's kind of a blatantly chauvinistic thing to say. What? To have a younger wife take care of me. Couldn't Madonna say the same thing? Sure. But she wasn't, women in society have been, in context, put down more and used as taking care of people more than but men have. I'm going to, now, I mean, now we're going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Because what That's if, what you, what if you, go, you were to get out of the car, Al, we have to fight. Mommy <laughs> <laughs> and Daddy are fighting. <laughs> because I don't think he meant it like that I at all. So. In my context, right, in what I'm thinking, if that was a woman and she goes, I needed a younger man to keep me active, to right. keep me moving around. I think that swings for gay couples, married couples, heterosexual couples. I think someone younger than you is going to keep you more active. Very That's true. what I think Agreed, but there's a societal context of what you're saying of a woman younger than me taking care of me. Women are often put in positions to take care of and not have their own agenda. And I'm just saying, I don't think Dick Van Dyke is sexist at all. I think just, We came out of the segment and you said that's sexist. No, I think it's a chauvinistic <laughs> type of statement and maybe he's not doing maliciously, but to say like the way, the key to marriage is to have someone younger taking care of me and it's a woman, I don't know, it just rubbed me as a little... It's, I, it's I, weird I, that's what you heard because I heard be trying to stay young yeah. keeps you active and in I turn, just wish gives you longevity. I wish he'd said that a younger person so that we can work together. And I just don't love the words taking care of me. That feels like a job, uh, if that makes sense. Well, I want my you, wife to take care of me. You wouldn't say that you take care of Brooks? I would, but you're not understanding the female perspective of history that we've always been the ones to take care of. There but I'm not talking about the female perspective. I'm talking about you, Tori, and I know how you feel about your husband. Yes. You wouldn't say that you take care of Brooks and he takes care of you? I would, but I, he said, he, I, for me, he said, I want the a younger woman to take care of me. And it just rang wrong. Maybe I, I'm being too sensitive. No, I don't, no. look, I'm not, I can't comment on your experience as a woman. And I, I completely understand that you've heard that. And usually when you've heard it, it's been in a pejorative manner. Exactly. And, and so I'm sure you, he didn't you mean it that way. It's going to hit your ear wrong. Right. But I, I, I hope if you go, uh, like, as you 
go forward, I hope you realize that when you hear things, it's not always coming from a negative perspective. Totally. And it's hard in this internet world to and understand I think society's that problem. everybody, yeah. sometimes it's That's just like, true. hey man, I like my young wife, she's cute and she makes me listen to hip hop. It's not always like, you ladies get my dinner. Exactly. But I understand but it's I go been there. like that up yeah. until this And I point. think a lot right. of people go there. Because the internet it's been that way for a long And I think it's run. driven into our society. If I'm like, hey guys, we're gonna move on to the next topic. Someone out there is gonna be like, hey sexist, there's a woman on the topic. I'm, not, I'm saying See, you ridiculous. guys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Saying like everybody, right, right, right. but someone out there would have a problem with me saying you guys. Yeah. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I do. So it's how your ears hear things, and I think that's our disconnect in society, right? You heard that, and I heard like, hey, that's pretty cool, man. Right. That's his secret to longevity is having someone young with him. Not that women couldn't vote. And right, but my thing 50s. is your lens is coming from your point of view. And of mine course, is of course. Mine, which is but where... doesn't make me right or you wrong. Absolutely or vice right. Versa. You're absolutely right. And again, I don't think Dick Van Dyke is at all a chauvinist. <laughs> at all. I just think the statement is imp it's important for us to deconstruct that and see, for me, that having yeah, a younger woman to take care of me just rang pejorative. It rang yeah. pejorative, but well, you're right. We'll find out what Streets' is, star is on in the Hollywood Walk of Fame and No! And yeah. I love it. Yeah. 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 Coming up on DBL, our gorgeous. interview with comedian <laughs> Joe McHale. He's telling us all about his new sitcom sitcom Animal Control and is Kendall Jenner dating Bad Bunny? Yes. Do you know who Bad Bunny is? No. Nope. breaking it down in her segment. Um, actually, do you know what um, actually is? Nope. <laughs> <laughs>Valentine's Day is over, but love is still in the air in LA. Or maybe that's just smog. Um, actually, let's see who's sparking romance rumors this time. First up, why'd you have to go and make things so complicated? Yep, we're talking Avril Lavigne. See what I did? She was seen hugging rapper Tyga outside of Nobu, and the two left in the same car. So everyone's wondering, are the two dating? Some of you may be confused, like we are, because Avril just got engaged last year to musician Mod Sun. But, um, actually, she and Mod Sun just called off their engagement. 
Mod Sun's new album has several songs dedicated to Avril, but sounds like that might not age well. <laughs> no. Tyga might not be a skater boy that I know of, but a new romance between the two may actually be on the horizon. Here's a throwback, Pete Davidson, remember him? Pete used to make headlines like every day for his past A-list relationships. Well, now he's in a relationship with his co-star, Chase Swee Wonders. But no one, I mean no one, seems to be talking about it. And maybe that's a good thing? Over the weekend, he was seen packing on the PDA with his new boo at the Daytona 500 NASCAR race. But I'm um, actually good for Pete. It's kind of like he's in a normal person relationship now. Maybe dating Chase Swee Wonders will do wonders for big ol' Pete. And lastly, an honorable mention. Kendall Jenner has been rumored to be hopping around with Bad Bunny. The two even went on a double date with Justin and Hailey Bieber. Um, actually, good luck to anybody who can keep up with that fan. That's all for this week. We'll be right back. Watching grass grow is for the board, but predicting blossoms bloom is best for the brave. And no small amount of pressure. A pressure felt by Michael Litterist and the National Park Service each year leading up to their peak bloom prediction, which drops in late February to early March. It puts us close enough that we can make an educated prediction. So much of this is contingent upon what's the high temperature going to be leading up to peak bloom. Really. That's only reliable about 10 days out. He explains the countdown begins once trees reach dormancy over the winter. From there, Park Service counts degree days, when the high temp of each day contributes to a grand total of 217. That's when peak bloom is going to occur. A day in the 70s is going to give you more points towards that and then a day in the 50s or the 40s. They also watch the indicator tree, which pretty reliably blooms about two weeks ahead of the others, plus historic patterns, even what other trees are starting to flower. All of that goes into the mix so that hopefully on March 1st, we come up with a four day window for when peak bloom is going to occur. As for this year's March 1st date, there's nothing magic about it. Literist says it's just the soonest making a prediction makes sense. Cherry Blossom Festival is sort of unique in that it's planned not by the calendar, but by the thermometer. And we know that reservations are going to start to be made shortly after that, and we hope that we're not going to have to adjust that at all uh, afterwards. So can't ask you for any insider information? You can ask, but I don't have any insider information. The trees are the ones that, that have the information, and they're not talking. Welcome back. We all know the great Joe McHale from shows like Community and The Soup, but now he is back with something wild. We spoke with Joe earlier about his new show, Animal Control. Take a look. Joe McHale, welcome yes. back. Woo! Thank you. Whoa, Thank Joe. You so Joe, much. what is this giant hey, light switch behind you and what does it turn on? Oh. Uh, that's, that's the power for Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> Just don't turn this. Uh, this is actually a uh, Halloween costume that my son wore when he was like two years old. He just wanted to be a light switch? And what he did... wanted to be a light switch. <laughs> That's and, awesome. Uh, uh, the, and I, we never, we kept it. And he started drawing on it at one point. <laughs> which we were like, okay, so that's, uh, yeah. Then I got a, a slingshot uh, <laughs> so I can pretend, uh, you know, I'm, I don't know, leave it to beaver or something. <laughs> 1950s. Uh, Joel, I want to talk to you about animal control because the commercials were all over the big game. Nice Mazel tov last week. Amazing. Hey. I'm really excited for you. What about this project made it worthy of, you know, that Joel McHale magic that turns a lot of women and men on? Ooh. Wow. Well, it was the money. <laughs> and, uh, no, I have a lot of gambling debts. No, uh, totally. boy. Well, you know, you hear, you hear this every time, which is uh, people are like, hey, the script sucks, right. the cast was awful, and the direction was uh, non-existent. That's why I took it. Uh, so, no, it was all, it was the opposite, which you hear over and over, which was really, I mean, like, if the script is good, the script is really good. Right. And uh, the cast was incredibly, and you can see, they're way better than I am. 
And then uh, the idea was pretty original. I had actually thought someone had done it before, and then I was like, ah, that might be a good sign. No one has. And <laughs> uh, and so that's how it kind of, you know, it's like baking a cake. Uh, and you just like, if all the ingredients have to come together, and we think it's a good cake, or um, it's going to poison you. So uh, <laughs> I also thought that the the, uh, the the animal part, because everyone has animal yeah. control exists in every city. And, whether you're removing raccoons or coyotes or an illegal ostrich farm, which <laughs> there are. And so it, those, those things happen every day. And I thought that, you know, oh, well, that's a thing that does happen. So uh, that that's why I liked it. And I love spending time away from my family. I hear that. <laughs> Amen, sir. Well, let's talk about your career because you have one of those things. It's, it's hard to say now we're in the Internet age is that your old shows, which some of them don't hold up, The Soup holds yes. up. Yes. Yep. Now talk to me because I have a guilty reality TV pleasure. Mine's a love after lockup. I don't want to talk about it unless you want to text about it. <laughs> what is your reality? reality TV show guilty pleasure oh boy uh well I like the one that Nikki Glazer hosts yeah, yeah. that's a good can't really say you can't really say can't that say one it. on yeah, it's <laughs> your show uh, it's uh, an island based something, show something boy island I I love how they make fun of that mm -hmm. genre mm -hmm. and uh like we all like on the soup we loved the bachelor because we would just call it uh, you know, like an insane game show where crazy people think they're in love. And uh, <laughs> this one kind of like it turns it on its head. And it's, I mean, obviously, The Bachelor is huge and people love it and they love the the fantasy that someone can just be with 30 other people for a month <laughs> and then marry them. It always works out. And uh, so this one is just I just like how straightforward it is. And Nikki is so funny uh now that i've told you my uh guilty pleasure what's yours oh uh oh so yours is mine is love after lockup yeah that's mine? that it's i mean it's in my original one was shipmates with the old chris hardwick oh, show geez. we'll talk about oh, that yeah. later yes, <laughs> my guilty mine. pleasure yeah. right now is revisiting old movies that i loved like last night i watched the burbs very that's good it. you oh, told me good. about that you that's said good. it holds up too it held that's a great up. movie it's great awesome movie. my friend has it tattooed on his arm the burbs what? He's a, he has a whole podcast not even kidding oh. shout out to kurt i really like um siesta si si uh, si si key that's your guilty pleasure? Yeah, the 20 year olds in bikinis and they're fighting and there's okay. alcohol okay. kids. Okay. Is Joel still here? <laughs> oh, there he is. Uh, what? I'm sorry, I just, I just bought an old iPhone for $64,000. Joel, that's called a callback, everybody. That's how it's done. I love it. It's a callback. Awesome as always. That's how it's done. Joel, we love you. We want you on our panel one day, please. It's always such a great time. DBL Nation, you must. Uh, watch Joel on Animal Control. It's going to be on Thursdays on Fox. Thank you so much, Joel. Hey, congratulations. We'll right Thank Congrats. you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. President Biden met with the president of Poland amid much fanfare Tuesday, where he reaffirmed the United States' commitment to its European allies. Our support for Ukraine will not waver. NATO will not be divided, and we will not tire. The president arrived in Warsaw after an unannounced visit to Ukraine Monday that was meant to show solidarity with the war-torn nation and send a defiant message to Russia nearly one year since the invasion began. I just come from a visit to Kyiv and I can report Kyiv stands strong. But Russian President Vladimir Putin sent a defiant message of his own in his State of the Nation address. Russia answered no questions. Putin said his nation would not be defeated in battle and announced that Russia will suspend its participation in the new START treaty, which limits each country to no more than 1,550 deployed nuclear warheads and 700 deployed missiles and bombers. The agreement includes on-site inspections to verify compliance. By suspending the last remaining nuclear arms control pact with the United States, Russia has significantly ramped up tensions with the West. Biden administration officials were quick to condemn the action. The announcement by uh, Russia that it's uh, suspending participation in New START is deeply unfortunate and irresponsible. Uh, we'll be watching carefully to see what uh, Russia actually does. The head of the United Nations also spoke out against Putin's announcement and encouraged Russia to reconsider. Skyler Henry, CBS News, the White House.
As people file their taxes, the tax credits will look different from the past two years when some extras were tacked on. Because of this, we've gotten a lot of questions in our email asking about dependent tax credits. To verify, we went to President and Chief Tax Information Officer at Jackson Hewitt Mark Steber, the American Rescue Plan, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and the IRS. The first question, can you claim a non-relative dependent and receive a refund on your 2022 taxes without having income? The answer for now is no. They changed the rule for 2021, made it a much more expansive credit, fully refundable. Uh, but after 2021, the rule expired and reverted back to the pre-pandemic amounts. So we can verify that no, you cannot claim a non-relative dependent and receive a refund if you do not have income. The next question, I haven't worked this year. Can I still claim child tax credit? And unfortunately, the now current child tax credit does have both, you know, a, an income offset requirement to use most of the credit. And then even to get the balance back in the way of the additional refundable child tax credit portion, you still have to have some income. For 2021, the American Rescue Plan increased key tax credits to help families offset expenses associated with the pandemic. It also allowed for families to claim the credit even if they did not have a minimum income. According to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, families must now earn at least $2,500 to get that credit. You can be self-employed, but you do have to have some income and some tax responsibility, at a minimum some income, to get any portion of that amount refundable. So we can verify that no, you cannot claim a child tax credit if you didn't report any income. We can verify. I'm Megan Bragg. Today's sandals word of the day is relax. Watch DBL every day for a word of the day. Then enter at dailyblastlive.com slash sandals for your chance to win a four day, three night escape for two to beautiful Jamaica. The winner will be announced on DBL March 1st. Welcome back. Bathrooms are one of the most used spaces in a home. So how do we use, how do we spice them up in 2023? We're talking about it in today's tips sponsored by Jacuzzi. First, natural materials and backlit mirrors are a great place to start. Incorporating wood pattern or textured tile was voted 2023's biggest bathroom trend. Next, when it comes to trends that are losing popularity, homeowners no longer want glass blocks or Hollywood style lighting. And finally, shower tiles, cabinets and wallpaper will add some spice and color to your bathroom. If you want to start your remodel, Jacuzzi can help you do it the right way with a spa like experience. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched stress free remodeling process. Visit Jacuzzi bathremodel.com or call 800-523-1523. I love an idea of a big patterned wallpaper in the bathroom. Having a moment. I just had that thought as we were running it's that. It's so cute, I have some right? Wallpaper, I think do you? Do. Like yes. I said, something really kind of, like my friend had all flamingos and it was just a small space and it really brought it. For the accent wall? Yeah, just, no, oh. the whole bathroom. Ooh. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I'm sorry.